It's been said, if you want to get married, sow a seed. But God has sent Apostle Takim to tell us, if you want to get married, come into my manifest presence. It's been said, if things are not okay with you, it's your foundation that is responsible or some altars in your village. But God has sent his teaching prophet to tell us, if things are not okay with you, it is the foundation of the Lord that is missing in your life. The Cry of the Spirit Ministries in Nairobi presents Wherever the prophetic God and apostolic Christ. teaching ministry of Richard E. Esther King. Jesus. Now, follow us to the sanctuary. Revelation chapter 10, verse 1. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven. They are the angels of different rank in the realm of the spirit. Different rank in the realm of the spirit. Their ranking determines their size. Their ranking determines their size. There's going to be a flow of the Shekinah glory here today. Amen. There are three major high ranking angels dispatched for this service. I'm not trying to be spooky. Listen carefully. I saw in the place of prayer two days ago. The Lord said to me, He's putting two here and one into that hall. And when He showed me, I see they manifested, open their mouth, and pour the glory among us. Amen. Tell you, never get set for something. Amen. The only thing that will deny you a visitation is you, not the devil. Do you understand me? I saw still another mighty angel come down from heaven. Lord, position them, as you have said, to do your word in the lives of your people. Amen. Let no captive live here with captivity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He said, clothe with the cloud. That is the glory. Clothe with the Shekinah glory. That is the cloth angels wear. And a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun. And his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book. Open in his hands. You know God is a God of books. That is why if you don't read his book. You are in trouble. And he set his right foot on the sea. And his left foot on the land. Now this is going to happen in the great tribulation period. But listen. This is a template. I don't care where you be locked up, where the enemy hid you. The Lord showed me a lot of people in the realm of the spirit that are coming here. They have been bandaged, tied and bandaged with very filthy and dirty bandages. I saw that in the spirit. Wherever, wherever God is, has dispersed these angels, with, with their foot will be in the place of your captivity. And one of the foot will be upon your life here. Amen. Do you understand me? So there is no distance. There's no distance. No matter how terrible your root, the root cause of your problem is, God's delivering power will deal with it this morning. In the name of Jesus. He said in the next word, and he cried and cried with a loud voice as with a lion, as when a lion roars. When he cried out, what happened? Seven thunders uttered their voices. Let me read from the Message Bible so that you hear it. We got some Bibles. Those of you that were not here, maybe at the end of today, I will show you the Bibles we brought so that you go and pick them. Let me give you, listen to the message, the way he put it. The same Revelation, chapter 10. Since you don't have it in your hand, just give me your attention. Today we'll travel through the world. As we we'll travel through the world, the glory will travel through your life. Amen. Look at how the message put it. He said, when he called out the seven thunders, when he called out, the seven thunders called back. That means when this angel, actually this angel is Jesus, when he spoke, seven thunders responded. Do you know the thunders? I will show you. They responded when he spoke. You see, the true voice of God is backed by signs and wonders. 
is backed by the manifestation of the Shekinah glory. He called once, seven thunders manifested. Seven. He called only once. Look at the next thing. He said, He said, When the seven thunders spoke, listen, I started to write all down, but a voice out of heaven stopped me saying, Seal with silence the seven thunders. Do not write a word. So when John the Beloved saw this, he was told not to write that aspect. Because there's going to be a generation that needs to dig deep and uncover what John did not write. They understand me. I told you the reason why the day of the rapture is not known is because everybody will know when the time comes. Through intimacy. Do you understand me? We will travel to Revelation. I want to speak on what I tried to. The seven pathways of the Shekinah glory. The seven pathways. This will conclude the journey we started on Wednesday. On how to summon the Shekinah glory. Stand on your feet. Let me pray. God of heaven and earth. As we uncover these pathways. Take us by faith. Activate our faith and put each and every one that will hear me on the pathway. Amen. Let no one be outside the pathway. Amen. Lord, you found Ezekiel and you took him by the lock of his hair and you transported him to a realm where you want him to be. Today, as a spiritual family, Lord, as a privileged leader of this house, I am asking you your mercy that as I speak your word, let the people you have brought to me this morning to hear your word, let them be taken by your sovereignty from wherever they were and let them be placed on the path of the Shekinah glory. In the name of Jesus, thank you for you are a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you may have your sin. As the word of the Lord comfort, do not allow yourself to be distracted. Do you understand me? Because you will be, you will experience translation and transfiguration. God will take you by your faith from where you are to where the path of a Shekinah glory exists in the realm of the spirit. Do you understand me? It's an unusual service. And I want you to give me your attention. When we began this journey on Wednesday, we spoke about how to summon the Shekinah. And on Friday, I told you that the Shekinah glory has pathways. You get my point? I won't go into the details of the mystery behind the seven thunders. But the only thing I will tell you at this your level is this. When Jesus spoke, remember, he is wrapped in the 3D of God's glory. The Dogza, the Shekinah, and the Kabod. When he spoke, the Shekinah manifested into seven dimensions. And John the Beloved saw it as seven thunders. I told you on Friday that I asked some of you, have you ever seen how lightning or thunder create a pathway? If you've seen it on that rain, you can see lightning can create a pathway. You get my point? And whatever it passes, it kills trees. If there are trees there. If there are crises, it kills crises. Do you understand me? So uh, that is how the Shekinah glory is. It creates pathways in the realm of the spirit. So when God wants his glory to work in your life, he takes you and puts you on the pathway. So it's therefore important that we understand the mystery behind the seven pathways in the Shekinah glory. Actually, when we say the Shekinah glory, for those of you that are new, we are talking about the invisible presence of God that has visible effect. The
tangible presence of God that can move. You physically feel it on your skin, on your hair, on your body. It can, it can make your face glow the way the face of Moses glue and the face of um, Stephen. You get my but that's just a kind of it can it, it can heal it can create body cells it can re, if your blood has been infected by any disease it can change it it can do supernatural blood transfusion do, do you understand me people are going to experience it here today the, I, I just saw what I just said I saw I tell you do not play with this moment my friend I don't need to scream or shout I just saw what I said. There's going to be supernatural blood transfusion yeah. here in this place. Yeah. If your blood had a disease, you're not going home with it. Yeah. God is giving you a fresh one. Yeah. I said, God is giving you a fresh one yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, what thing you should do in this service, do what Elijah advised Elisha. He said, if you see me when I'm taken, it shall be yours. So, so like in Nigeria, we know how to step into moments like this by shouting amen with the whole of our heart jumping into things in the spirit. We don't care. When we want to receive breakthrough, we don't care who is sitting by our side. You get my point? You don't care about your powder, your makeup, your hair too. Let it scatter. If that hair did not scatter, your body will scatter. You get my point? Let the hair scatter. It's all my life scattering. If my hair will scatter and go arrange my life, is it not okay? A woman went to a crusade and the poor girl moved so much. She fell under the anointing not to seven times. And I will show you why the anointing flows that way. Seven times. And she lost her shoe. And she went home with her shoe. And I said, where's your shoe? I don't care. You've lost her. And so what? I don't care. God fixed my life. I don't care what I lost. Do, do you understand me? I don't care. If God fixed my life. I don't care what I lost. She had been barren for years. And the Holy Ghost walked in her. And in nine months, she got her child. Yeah. Do you understand me? So now watch this. I, as, 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 the, there are two ways that the prayer you've prayed, like I instructed you to pray, and the effect of the word that I'm going to speak today, and the prophetic utterance I'm going to declare over your life. There are two ways that will penetrate into your life and set two things. Number one, let me show you. Go to the book of Genesis. So that when it begins to happen, you don't resist the Holy Ghost. Do you understand me? You don't resist the Holy Ghost when it begins to happen. Revelation is what helps us to come into things supernatural. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, 7. From the message Bible, it says, God formed man out of, out of dead from the ground and blew into his nostrils. <laughs> blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life. If you have your own, it says, and God breathed into his nostrils and he became a living being. It means divinity can be activated by the breath of a man who is wired in the Holy Ghost. You get my point? So that is why sometimes when I pray, I blew through the mic. Because that is, that is the way you translate answer from the scripture. Look at what the Lord said to me. The wind of the Holy Ghost that will blow from such ministrations will affect two parts of your life. You get my point? In Ezekiel 37, when God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind, the wind came upon the bodies and they stood up. So Ezekiel 34 represents the invisible realm. Sorry, 37 represents the invisible realm. So anything in the invisible aspect of your life that has been damaged before today, God will fix it. Yeah. As the wind of the Holy Ghost blew, it's going to affect your invisible realm. Yeah. Now, now, when it touch your invisible realm, you will feel it visibly and fall on the ground. That's what is going to happen. So God is going, the reason why he despised the angels he sent is because the angels of God are equipped to deal with the invisible. 
You get my point? They are bigger than evil water. They are bigger than ancestral spirit. They are bigger than generational causes. You get my point? God will. Some of you, if you have enough faith, I'm, I'm declaring everything the Lord asked me to declare. So pick it by faith. If you have enough faith, I see in the spirit a blanket of causes roll away from a family. So, so if you have enough faith, your family is going to obtain their deliverance in this service. In the name of Jesus. Remember the principle I told you before. If one man can stand before the devil and put a curse over the whole family from generation to generation, one person can stand before God and put a blessing the whole family from generation to generation. In the name of Jesus. Whenever God dispatched angels is to put to, to rest ancient captivities. Things that your prayer cannot solve. There are things that prayer cannot solve. Because you don't know them. You get my point? That is when the glory appears. So that is the first way that God is going to translate all the answers into your life. Now the second way is still in the book of Genesis chapter 2. Let me read from the New King James Version. Genesis chapter 2. Before we go into the world. Because as we flow in it, you will experience these things. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21 and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam tell me deep sleep so the first person to fall under the anointing was Adam on a serious note I've ministered in places where the poor came upon people so we're there for 12 hours You get my point? My father and Lord ministered in a place the poor were arrested on people for two days. They were sleeping for two days. Their, their family took them home, put them on the bed. Sleeping continues. Deep sleep from the Holy Ghost. Why would God put you into deep sleep? Look at the next thing. He caused the Lord God caused a deep fall on Adam and he slept. So why the man slept? And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, he made it to a woman and he brought to the man. Which means when the man was in deep sleep, he carried out a surgical operation. Because he saw that the man had a need. It is not good for him to be alone. And God said, I want to meet his need. But let me Send him to a deep sleep. And he went into a deep sleep and God took something from him, worked on it, met his need, and woke him up. I said, this is what we are looking for. This is what I want to do in your life. This is what I have done. So when the deep sleep of the Holy Ghost come on us, is to work on us. Are you hearing me? It's to do what? Work on us. Every need we have can be met under the deep sleep of the Holy Ghost. Barren wombs can be opened. Sicknesses can be removed. Causes can be erased. Backwardness can be rolled away forever. Out of the life of a person. So if God used a deep sleep to fix, to create marriage, it means he can use it to create money. Yeah. To create health. Yeah. To create favor. Yeah. You fall a different person and get up a different person. Yeah. You fall sick and you get up healthy. Yeah. You fall poor and you get up favored of the Lord to become rich. You fall under a curse and you get up blessed of the Lord. Yeah. Are you understanding me? That's why we don't falsify. That's why I don't lay hand. So that don't be as if I push you. Do you understand me? So that let the hand of the Lord, not that I can't lay hand, I can't. But let the hand of the Lord touch you. Because the reason why I, I, I used to lay hand is just to activate your faith. I don't need to lay. You get my point. Let the glory come on you, send you to a deep sleep that will turn your life around. And God will carry all the prophetic promises 
all the answers to your prayers and everything you need in your life he will put it in your life while you are in deep sleep in the name of Jesus there are a lot of amazing miracles that have happened from deep sleep a man of God was very mightily used of God one day the doctor he said the doctor looked nice he had a sharp pain in his um, spinal cord and they went to scan they said the thing had shifted that he had to go for surgery he now told them that that is the verdict of the doctor let me hear from God also he went to the Lord and the Lord told him because he's a preacher he said the Lord told him put on your message your own message and listen to it while you are listening to it my power will send you to a deep sleep you will wake up and your bone will be adjusted so he put his videos and was listening so while he was ministering to people you know sometimes these are our video guys they don't capture ministration which is not good are you hearing me sir they don't capture like like the day the glory descended on saturday during the end time conference you remember they didn't capture it i wish they captured it when you capture such moment and take it home it duplicates the effect so the man his videos he captures ministration so why he saw himself ministering to people and listening to the power of god the power of god came from tv and hit him he fell on the ground and slept from that day till the following day when he woke up his bone adjusted that thing happened twice another time he he broke his bone in the hand it was to go and preach the following day the same thing happened so when the doctors came the following day to check his bone but then they checked the bone that broke before had been replaced they now say you are not a human being god have done wonders through deep sleep you get my point so when people fall under the anointing we are not playing a charismatic game this is the supernatural realm of God. It began from Genesis chapter 2 and it was under the glory. Do you understand me? Sometimes people transmit diseases to people. The food you eat, gather some stuff underneath. People could poison you through things you eat without knowing. Things that should manifest later in your life and God will just come and cause you to throw them out. Through the deep sleep. So these are the two ways God is going to move today. So I want you to open your spirit as his word come forth. So look at Psalm 102. We are going to camp around Psalm 102. That will be our book of consideration today. Psalm 102 verse 12. Psalm 102 verse 12. Look at what the Bible says says but you oh lord shall endure for how many days forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations i pray that god do something in your life today that will cause his name to be remembered from generation to generation oh god in heaven do a thing in the life of your people today that will cause your name to be remembered forever. Do you think the love of someone here today that will remove blindness from the eyes of their families? Do you think the love of someone here today that they will see your light, oh God, as the entire family? You someone today, oh God, as a tool to remove veils and darkness from an entire lineage. Do something that will cause your need to be remembered for generations. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, You will arise, verse 13, and have mercy on Zion. We are the Zion. Zion is a, it's a prophetic name for the church, for the Christian. For the child of God. I know in, in the Israel there are Zion. Is that what I'm talking about? He said you will arise and have mercy on Zion. Why? For the time to favor her. Yes. The set time has come. 
Now, now you can read this scripture and claim it when it's not time, and nothing works. Those of you that were here on Friday, you know how the service began. You know I was preaching, and the Lord said to me, "Look at what it's about doing today." So it's a set time for someone favor. Now it is a set time when God says it's a set time, and because God spoke to us and says it's a set time, the Bible said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. When God said it's my time to favor you, you need to build up prophetic expectations and trust God to do His word in your life. Tell your neighbor it's my set time. Say again, it's my set time for a major move of God in my life. God will announce His name for generations. God will do something in someone's life today. I can touch it in the spirit. I can see it in the spirit. That an entire family will be delivered from damnation. He will just beam a light in your life. And from this day, God will begin to uproot darkness in that house. And everyone will just be repenting on their own. They will just be repenting on their own. They will just be repenting on their own. Because the chains of darkness are going to fall. And they are going to be free from the confusion of hell. In the name of Jesus. He said the time to favor her has come. Yes, the set time has come. Verse 14. For your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her doors. Look at the next thing. So the nations shall fear the name of the Lord. Amen. God want this nation to fear his name. Amen. The crowd of the spirit is going to be a foot of his glory. Amen. God will do terrible things in righteousness here today. Amen. That will cause this nation to fear him. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What is going to come upon you will take off the entire 2019. It will make the entire 2019 a year of going forward for you in the realm of the miraculous. God will be here to announce his name and cause his name to be feared in this nation by reason of the miracles and the outpouring that we are going to be experiencing in your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Tell the Lord in one minute, make me a signboard of your fear in this nation do something in my life that will announce your fear that will make this nation fear you something that will make this nation fear you something in my life that will make this nation fear you do something in my life that will make this nation fear you that will make this nation fear you something Lord do something in this place that will make this nation fear you that will make this nation fear you something something in this place in Jesus name we pray you will be seated so the nation shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory verse 16 why would they fear his name for the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. We're going to get to verse 22, but let's look at verse 16. For he shall appear in his glory. The, what, what glory? The, he shall appear in his doxa to reveal himself. He shall appear in his Shekinah to demonstrate what the dogs are has revealed. He shall appear in his Kabor to bury people in his goodness. He shall appear. So these are not days of the anointing oil 
in a bottle. These are days of the glory of God. Uh, the, the, the tangible presence of God. Are you understanding me? That will set us on fire. Keep us aflame in the Holy Ghost. Make us untouchable. For the Lord shall appear. For the Lord shall be Lord. He shall appear in his glory. You see, we are limiting ourselves today to the Shekinah glory. There are seven pathways of God's tangible presence, the Shekinah, in his redemptive plan. Seven. And we're going to uncover it. Look at Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Makili brasetele yabakada. Look at verse 5. Oh Lord, this is why I wanted us to sing that song, which you couldn't sing. You are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You see, I don't care what you were born into. Today, under the prophetic anointing, I take you out of that demonic heritage. And I bless you in the heritage of Jehovah. I command everything demonic, everything destructive that you inherited by God. I command it be rolled out of your life in the service. The Lord is your portion in the land of the living. The Lord is your portion in the land of the living. The Lord is your portion in the land of the living. The Lord is your portion in the land of the living. He said, you are the portion of my inheritance. Not my father's house. You are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my Lord. Somebody has to get angry and reject everything that is demonic and satanic. Because that is not our property. Look at verse 6. He said, the lies are falling to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good heritage. What are the lies? There are seven. And those lies are the pathways of the Shekinah glory. They are falling onto me in pleasant places. So when God pushed me into it, or I fall into it, it's okay. You see, David, you may have your seat, David had an issue with God. He did something wrong, and as a son <laughs> that had a relationship with his father, the father needed to give him some, some lashes of the cane. And the father sent a prophet, David, choose among these three cane. Which one? If you read the story, David said, "Ah, let me fall into the hand. Let me fall into the hand of God, not the hand of man." David knew something our generation did not know. Now we have to balance that all with what uh, the New Testament said when either Paul or Paul say it's a fearful thing. To fall into the hand of the Lord. Watch this. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord if you are rebellious. But a safety thing, if I may use that word, to fall into the hand of the Lord if you are his child. Do you understand me? There was a couple, very, very loving couple. They loved themselves so much. And um, I saw that when I was a child in my village. So, each time there was this day the wife did something that the husband was very angry and was talking. She just came and fell on his hands. I said, please, let me carry all the blame. I think it was the children that did something, but she caused it. She fell in his hand. I said, you just beat me. Don't beat the children. Beat me, beat me, beat me. And the man started laughing. You get my point? I took an, a revelation from there. When we fall in the hand of our Lord in repentance, his anger ceases. Do you understand what I'm talking about? 
His anger ceased. His anger ceased. That was how that something was settled. You get my point? The man looked at the wife and said, How can I lay my hands upon you, my wife? Get up and embrace me. <laughs> and the matter was settled. David said, I beg that fall in the hand of the Lord because that is the realm of the Shekinah. It has seven pathways. Is somebody hearing me? The first pathway that you find this is the first one when you want to step into Shekinah glory. The first pathway is the pathway of God's mercy. That is the first pathway in the Shekinah glory. And if you read our devotion, I was here yesterday also. I wrote something there that mercy is we not getting what we deserve. That means you deserve death, and God said, No, I changed my mind. You deserve sickness, and God said, No, I heal you. You deserve, you deserve punishment, and God said, No. You deserve a curse, and God said, No. That's what mercy is. Do you understand me? There's a pathway called God's mercy in the Shekinah glory. And look at what the Bible says about this pathway. Look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 11. For as the heavens are higher above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who do what? Who fear him. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. So when you step into this pathway, transgressions are removed. Sins and consequences are erased. Do you understand me? He said, look at what activates in that pathway. Verse 13. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are those. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and is gone. And his place, and his place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. On those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. Now, what is God saying here? When we step into the pathway called God's mercy in the Shekinah glory, God will x ray our frailty. He will look at how, how mortal we are, how frail we are. He said, No, let me not break this thing is somebody hearing me let me not break these things let me not break let me just preserve this egg from breaking that's what this scripture is telling us let me show you one more scriptures look at exodus 33 one of the earliest early, early men in scriptures to step into the shekinah glory was moses look at what he says exodus 33 verse 18 and he said please show me your glory then he said I will make all my goodness pass before you show me my goodness and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now, if you stop here, you will not get it right. Go look at how Paul presented it. Romans chapter 8. You know, Moses journeyed into the glory, into the Shekinah. And he stumbled into this pathway. Are you understanding me? He stumbled into this pathway called God's mercy. And when he stumbled into it, God began to speak. I say, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. That means 
My mercy is controlled by my sovereign judgment. So that that means if God chooses to have mercy on, on you, He chooses to have mercy on me, it doesn't matter what people think. The mercy of God for His own is not controlled by public opinion. Is somebody hearing me? The mercy of God on his own is not controlled by public opinion. So when you step into this path in the Shekinah glory, let's, let me show you how your life will become. Go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. Are we all there? For he says to Moses, when, remember we have read it, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Who is the whomever? Anybody who can stumble into the Shekinah and step on the pathway called God's mercy, you receive mercy. Is somebody hearing me? That's what he's saying. God is not saying I will choose to have mercy on this and choose not to have mercy on this. He was simply saying there is a pathway in my Shekinah glory called mercy. And this mercy that exists in that place is from everlasting to everlasting. Anything within the glory does not die. Anything within the glory is described with the word everlasting. It's described with the word eternal. Do you understand me? You don't describe things in time with the word eternal. So it is things in the glory you use the word eternal to describe them. And God is saying this kind of mercy that you find in the pathway in the Shekinah is from everlasting to everlasting. It, it lives longer than the people. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why when God has mercy on you, your children will come to inherit it. Because it is from everlasting. Somebody must step into that path here today. Because when you step into that path, and your days are fulfilled and you die, because it is from everlasting to everlasting, your child will begin to read from the same mercy. You can see that in the life of David. David lived there. Go look at Manasseh. Manasseh, you brought no sense to Israel. He sacrificed human beings. He worshipped all kinds of devils. The portal that manages are open in Israel. Very few can open it. The evil portal. He brought devils. There's no time for me to tell you why God was provoked. Because the only nation under heaven that have a visible portal of heaven there is Israel. Other nations, their portal is determined by the kind of church that exists there. But Israel had a portal. They up to now the portal existed. Why? Because that was where the Garden of Eden was. That was where Adam and God were, were meeting. You get my point? So when Manasseh now opened the portal of hell, side by side the portal of God, it was an insult. But look at what happened. God caused him to be carried away captive. He went through everything. And God now said, Ah, my mercy on David. The mercy God showed David was what rescued Manasseh. Somebody must stumble into this part here today. So that if peradventure the spirit of hell knock you, come into your child tomorrow, the mercy of God will arrest that child and bring that child back to Jesus. A woman found out mercy like that and all her life, she was praying for her son to be born again. The most she prayed, the worse the boy became. But she was persistent, very patient, until she died. When she died, the funeral, of course, according to the, pro the, the procedure, the boy is the first to come and look at the mother's face. So when they were the funeral service, the boy, and only son, they held him, he came like this. When you look at the mother's face, God activated her face to repeat the very words she told him before she died. Give your life to Christ. Heaven is real. Hell is real. The boy started crying. 
he gave his life to Christ at his mother's funeral and became one of the powerful preachers on the face of the earth. So the mercy in the Shekinah is from everlasting to everlasting. If I can only stumble, stumble into it, the security of my lineage is guaranteed. Are you understanding me? So God is saying, I will have mercy on whom? Who is the womb? Whoever will get there. Whoever will get into that place and find the path. Are you understanding me? The beauty is the scripture shows us how to find the path. And let me show you right now. How do I find this path in the Shekinah? How do I locate it? Let's complete what we are reading. You say, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Look at verse 16. So then, <laughs> it is not of him who wills. It's not your certificate. It's not your prayer. It's not your fasting. You see, when you fast and pray outside God's mercy, there will be no result. But when you fast and pray within his mercy, there will be result. So it means when you locate this pathway, life becomes easy. Smooth. No more toiling. Toiling is a product of activity outside God's mercy. When God has not shown you mercy, that your business will shrink and die. But when God shows you mercy, no matter the devils that come against you, it will expand and expand. A people that God has shown mercy, the more you persecute them, the more they increase. How do you know somebody that is living in the path of the Shekinah call God's mercy? The more you attack them, the more they expand. The more you attack them, the more they increase. You see, I want you to get this straight. If there's any place to live, it's in the pathway called God's mercy. Look at what he said. So then, it's not of him who wills, not of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. Every aircraft is powered by engines. Picture yourself to be the aircraft. Picture those engines to be God's mercy. Powering your life. Making you to fly above obstacles. Fly above satanic resistance. Fly above whatever the devil throw at you. May God's mercy become your engine. Rise on your feet and prophesy over your life. From this day forward, may the portals of mercy open over your life. May God's mercy become your powerhouse. May God's mercy begin to power your life. May God's mercy begin to power your children. May God's mercy begin to power your business. May God's mercy begin to power your career. May God's mercy begin to power your health. May God's mercy begin to power your economy. I prophesy, may God's mercy begin to power your economy. Your economy, your economy, your economy. May God's mercy power your economy. May God's mercy power your faith. May God's mercy power your faith. May God's mercy power your prayer. May God's mercy power your fasting. May God's mercy power your giving. May God's mercy power your tithes and your offerings. In the name of Jesus. It's not of him who lives. Not of him who runs. It's of the Lord who shows mercy. May God bring us to that realm. Where we don't struggle like others. I said we don't struggle like others. Why? Because we are a people of God's mercy. Are you understanding me? So the days of toiling can come to an end today. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now look at what the Bible says. I love operating in a realm where it's not of he that wills. Let, let me tell you how beautiful that realm is. Let me just give you a parable. People are running on a race. A hundred meters race. And you that have God's mercy, there's a prize there to pick. You that have God's mercy, as soon as you got up, ah, everybody around you have moved like a bullet. And you are behind them. And you are still running with a wobble leg. By the time they are getting close to the prize, something just happened. This one fall. This one fall. This one fall. This one fall. 
Now you get there and pick the price. May that become your experience. May that become your experience. May that become your experience. In the name of Jesus. That is God's mercy. It's not of he who runs. It's not of he who wears. Let me tell you something that happened in Nigeria in 2011. 2010, 2011. One of the most coveted, coveted presidency in Africa, I would have said the word, but in Africa, is the presidency of Nigeria. If you become a Nigerian president, even if you don't steal, the money they will give you, <laughs> companies will just plow money into your head. The favor and the privileges are so many. You control so much. You are the most powerful person in the nation. You get my point? Enemies will become friends in one second. You are the most, one of the most powerful person on the face of the earth. You have access to anything. Now, people have fought and killed to become the president of the nation. Something happened in that year that I thought would have taught our politicians lesson. But politicians don't learn. There was a man called Goodluck Jonathan. He began his career as a lecturer in the University of Port Harcourt teaching geology. His wife was the active person. So she helped somebody who is late now to campaign for governorship. And the person won. The person was about winning. And the person called her and said, listen, do you have anybody? Are you interested? And she said, no, I'm not interested. Do you have anybody that I can make the deputy governor? She said, my husband. The man was in the lecture room while the woman was on the field. He came and became deputy governor without campaigning. Shortly later, the governor ran into trouble waters and lost his seat. By our constitution, the deputy governor must become governor. He became a governor. And let me tell you something. The governor of River State, the governor of most states in Nigeria, they are more prestigious. I'm not insulting anybody. I'm not insulting your country. I'm talking based on reality. Our governors, we have a state in Nigeria that is richer than Kenya. I mean richer. The oil wells alone, if you have them here. So a governor of that state will have more than your president. Will control more money than your president. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when we say governor, it's not don't think it within your own context. When our governors are coming, they come with more interest than your president. On a serious note. Do you, do, you, do you understand me? You begin to confuse. Is he a governor or a president? Because they are, it depends on the state. Now watch this. So he became a governor of one of the choice states in the south that have oil. Now, a time came that president uh, Olusegun Obasanjo was finishing his tenure. He needed to hand over. Yeah, like I said, our presidents are very powerful. So he began to choose who to succeed him. There was a man I know, very rich, the governor of River State. Many other governors. They went around campaigning, spending money. There was one that spent over three billion naira in campaign. They bought every. Everybody thought that was the president. That would be the next president. Good luck, Jonathan was just the governor of, of his state. He never opened his mouth and said, I want to contest for anything. But Sebastian so just stood like this and picked one other guy that never dreamt and made him the president. To good luck, Jonathan, the deputy. Two people that never wasted their money. Fast forward. Not too long, the president died. And from our constitution, the vice president should be the president. 
forces will rose up. No, it can't be. It can't be. In two months, the most powerful forces that were screaming died. One of them, they didn't shoot him. He heard gunshots and died. I'm taking you somewhere. And the man became acting president. From acting president, he became president. We start campaigning. Is somebody hearing me? When God show you mercy, he will make people to think for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? May you step into that favor today. I say he will make them think for you. You will not labor, you will go and pick the goodies. I prophesy the heavens to be open over your life. I prophesy the heaven to be open over your life. I command the days of toiling to come to an end in your life. May people think for you. May people prepare the ground for you. May people raise businesses for you. May people make money available for you. May people prepare jobs for you. May people speak for you in the name of Jesus. That is what we say mercy. That is what is God's mercy. You see, we were supposed to live on earth by mercy. It's not of he that wills. Of he that wants. Because of God that shows mercy. That man's political life is a major message. It said during that year, everybody understood this is God. Even the Muslims, they understood. I remember some crazy politicians came over and said, ah, this Nigerian presidency, I won't fight for it again. If God wants to give you, he will give you. Is somebody hearing me? There is, there is something called, we call it in the prophetic, gap, G-A-P. Tell me G-A-P. What is a gap? A gap is a space. Is that not? But in prophetic, it means God's alternate plan. Only God's mercy can push you there. Sometimes people will be there fighting for something. Fighting for something. Fighting. You will just come and pick it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, Let me tell you how God taught me that lesson as, as a little boy. <laughs> when we came to Abuja, we moved from where my dad was working. He was transferred to the federal capital Abuja when I was six, seven years old. Our family was poor because the man was not earning well. So what we do, we don't even have money to buy meat. So what we do, if we want to eat meat, we go to, we go to hunt for rabbits and bush rat. You know there's bush rat. <laughs> Where I came from in my village, we don't know about bush rat. But when we got to the north, we discovered that the north they eat bush rat. So, and when you walk with the Jews, you have to behave like a Jew. You get my point? There is no meat, so we have to go hunting. Now, there was this day. Look at how we hunt. We set fire like this in a bush. I come and stand like this with sticks, waiting for either the rabbit or the rat to come out. Then we go to hit it. Something happened one day. They set a fire because they have reserved that bush. We have all reserved it for a long time. Waiting for all the rats. We'll burn all that bushes, burn all that bushes. All the animals ran into that one. Now, we didn't know <laughs> that many of them have escaped. Only one remained. So there was this day, all the heavy warriors, people that are bigger than me, <laughs> hunters. I was just a little boy, bigger than me. We them all came with sticks. So they set the bush. Me, I went and stood like there and said, Kai. I will not even run after anything today because all these guys, I won't catch anything. So I will just watch it. I will just watch it. So the fire was burning. Was burning. They set the fire. They were doing like this. Everybody was like, what's it? They will say something. They were like this. Me, I just stood like this. Do you know what happened? A rat came out. <laughs> and ran to where I am. When it was running, everybody, bah, 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 they were dodging, they couldn't kill it. Me, I have no sticks. 
in my hands to kill it. When the thing ran to where I am, I said, this is mine. <laughs> I was a goalkeeper as a little boy. So I dived. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing bite this my finger. I see this finger. He held it. I didn't feel the pain, my friend. I pulled it back. And I went like this. And I took it to the house and I roasted it. All of them went. They set the fire. They tried to kill it. It dodged and got to me. May others labor and you reap the labor. May others labor and you reap the labor. I prophesy over you today. If you have been suffering and toiling and toiling from this day forward, others will labor and you will reap the labor. Others will labor and you will reap the labor. In the name of Jesus. Where is it in the Bible? John chapter 4. Quickly, let me show you. John chapter 4. Look at what Jesus said. Tell your neighbor, we must know the generation we belong to. Look at, look, look at what Jesus said. Open quickly. John chapter 4. Verse 38. <laughs> verse 37. I love this. I love this. Are we all there? What did he say? For in this, the saying is true. One source and another reap. May this scripture become true in your life. May this scripture become true in your life. I feel strong in my spirit that people are being ushered into this land from today. They have cheated you for too long. They have taken advantage of you for too long. Today, those days have been a rush. Step into a season of reaping. Where others have sown. Look at the next segment. Verse 13. Why you listen? He said, I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored. And you have entered into their labors. You see, that is why you need to find this pathway in the Shekinah. This pathway called God's mercy. When you step in the others labor, you reap the labor. I say others labor, you reap the labor. May that become your experience. May that become your celebration. May that become your testimony. So it's not of you that wills. Or he that runs. It's of the Lord. That shows, shows mercy. Tell your neighbor, you just choose me. I don't qualify. I don't qualify. You just choose me. I don't qualify. You don't. You just choose me. I don't deserve it. You just choose me. Are you understand me? I don't qualify. You just choose me. The devil could be mad. You just choose me. People may hate me. You just choose me. People may not like my voice, but he has chosen me. You may not like the way I look, but he has chosen me. Somebody give God a mighty shout here in the house. That is the kind of a life you live. When you step into that pathway in the Shekinah, call God's mercy. You will find it today. I say you will find it today. So let's see. How do we find the pathway? How do we find this pathway in God's mercy? Let me just read one scripture or two. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Look at how, what Peter presented to us. Acts 3. Verse 19, it says, Repent therefore and be converted, converted, converted. That your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. A life of repentance will always lead into that place in the Shekinah. Amen. A life of repentance. You see, a people who operate with the I deserve it mentality will never come into this place. If you pray with the I deserve it mentality, that's what the Bible calls pride, spiritual pride. You can't get here. This place is an exclusive preserve of those who say, Father, I'm not even worthy to live. Do you see the way the prodigal son found it? Look at the way he found it. Look at Luke, Luke 15. See the way he found it. See the way he found it. 
we remember that he was under the glory and left and lost everything the glory gave him he now remembered i need to go back to that place is somebody hearing me so, 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 so look at look at what he said to himself in verse 18. I will arise and go to my father's house. Look, 15, 18. I will say to him, look at his prayer. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Do you see that there is no I deserve it mentality? I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Why do you think you are worthy for a marriage after you have blew your life into pieces? Talk to me. It's quiet. You see, if you want to come into this realm where God will do things that will bring tears out of our eyes, it will be a realm of, Lord, I don't deserve it. But just let your mercy. I don't deserve it. Let your mercy just. Do you know how many times Christians pursue God for things they don't deserve and they tell God we deserve and they pray for 70 days? I have maintained it. If God wants to give you a thing, you don't need seven days of prayer and fasting. I'm a witness. You don't need it. You don't need it. Let me tell you something. Somebody who live a reckless sexual life, aborting all kinds of abortions, you don't deserve a child. Talkless of marriage. So when you want to step into this path, tell the Lord, I don't deserve it. Then he will bring you. That's what the prodigal son did. He said, I am no longer worthy. I was your son before. But based on the things I did, in fact, I have passed judgment on myself. It's good for us to judge ourselves. The Bible says when we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. So I have passed judgment. You know why? In the, in the culture where this story was written, when a son left the father's house on his own, he has ceased being the son. He, he shouldn't come back. In fact, in that culture, that's why they understood the story. In that culture, when the son is coming back, anybody who meets him on the road, they will stone him and make sure he doesn't come into the place. But look at what the father did. The father went ahead of the people to meet him on the way before people come. And thank God he met the boy with the right attitude. The I don't deserve it attitude. I don't deserve a house. I don't deserve a job. But let your mercy. Let your mercy just speak for me. Do you understand me? That is how to find this pathway in the Shekinah. Many of us, our attitude is not letting us find it. We have to do what we call attitude adjustment. I told you how I pray. On Friday. Was it Friday or Wednesday? I told you that the things I will tell God you know I don't know anything I don't know anything in, in your Bible I don't know all these people that are saying I know I know it's a lie you know I don't know so show me I don't pray those prayers for two minutes and revelation Shh. will break forth so when I'm speaking people will think this guy has super intelligence no I'm a super fool it's the Holy Ghost Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Is the Holy Ghost. Nobody deserves anything. If we must find the pathway, we must enter in with I don't deserve it mentality. Look at Paul. Paul called himself the chief sinner. And yet he has not slept with any woman. He didn't do anything. He still called himself the chief sinner. Do you think he was sinning? No. Attitude. That is how to find your path into this part of the glory. Let me tell you what happened. When you locate this part in the glory, look at the beauty of it. You come face to face with the throne of grace. Oh, this is real. You come face to face with the throne of grace. He protects us that you begin to find help in time of need. That means God will make sure divine help overtake your time of need. Is somebody hearing my language here today? I mean beef as the time of need is appearing. Help is showing forth. When the Lord is asking for money, money is coming. When they are looking for this, this is coming. When the doctor is asking for his bill, the money is coming. When, watch this. It has, when the doctor, when the Lord calls, where do I come for my money? You begin to start back. M, 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 M. Come on, toss it, toss it. So that, so that you will drop the line. And you are not sure. 
but because you are on that path of mercy as you say come on Thursday just to put him off heaven will bring the money on Wednesday put it in your hands that's what I'm talking about there's a generation that before they call the answer once they are suspecting he has heard they carry what I call a compelling anointing when they walk in places it fashion the hands of people to do them good you have to locate the path in the Shekinah of glory is somebody hearing me so the prodigal son was a wise man he told the father me I am not worthy to be called your son. The guy was not a fool. You cannot deny your son. DNA. You cannot cancel DNA. But the guy said, I am not worthy. Treat me as a servant. And the father now said, You have found the path with your attitude. You cannot be treated as a servant. You'll be treated as a son who died, but he came back to life. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? So I don't care what you have done. You see, the problem is not what we have done, the problem is what we are not doing. Somebody help me. I know a woman with her own mouth. She aborted over 60 children. She aborted over 60 times. Then she met the Lord and said she don't deserve marriage. She was just serving the Lord. As I speak now, she has five children. Glorious marriage. When you locate this part in the Shekinah, recovery, restoration, Things are beginning to come in. Is somebody hearing me? May pride not kill us. May arrogance not destroy us. In the name of Jesus. That is why this spirit of self-righteousness is very, very destructive. Hypocrisy and self-righteousness, they won't let us find this glorious part. To me, with what I've described for my life, if you don't find this number one part, you can't find the rest. It is this one that brings you to the rest. Do you see how glorious it is to be in that path? How things just begin to happen for you? You see, life was not meant to be difficult. Do you hear what I say? Tell you about life was not made to be difficult. Say again, life was not made to be difficult. It now means if life is difficult to me, there is something. I don't know. There's a realm in God I've not stepped in. Who told you that you cannot, you can, you see, I have seen many, many fatherless, motherless people that are richer than the father fool. Do you hear what I'm saying? Richer than the father fool. A mother fool. <laughs> you know why? They found this place and help begin to pour. Help just begin to come on them. When somebody is looking for who to favor, he locates them. When somebody is looking for who to promote, he locates them. When somebody is looking for who to recommend, he locates them. May that favor begin to work in your life. May that favor begin to work in your life. In the name of Jesus, announce it loudly. Say, My days. My days. That is two weeks. Say, My days. My days. Of toiling. Of toiling. Are over. One more time. Say, my days days of toiling are over. over. One more time. Say, my days 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 of toiling are over. over. Say, from this day forward, forward, the path in the Shekinah Shekinah, that contains God's mercy mercy, will become my dwelling place. I shall be favored. I shall be, favored. I shall be identified for favor. I shall be distinguished by God's mercy. God's mercy will keep me. God's mercy will sustain me. God's mercy will fight for me. God's mercy will provide for me. I've got a mighty shot of pressure. You may have your say. The prodigal son located that path. Look at what it gave him. Look at what it gave him in verse 22. 
But the father said to his servant, bring out the best rope. Did he ask for best rope? No. And put it on him. And put a ring on his head. And sandals on his feet. I've taught here before. I told you the meaning of these things. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my, my son was dead and is alive again. He, will, he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. May heaven rejoice over us. In the name of Jesus. One other way you step into this mercy of God is when God in his sovereignty overlooked the things you did in ignorance. That should sink in your spirit because some of you are stepping into the miraculous based on that today. The things you did in ignorance now that you have known God will not say okay I will push you into that realm in the Shekinah when you begin to reap the benefits of my mercy. The Bible says in time of ignorance he overlooks. So it means the only way to come to that pathway of getting such a benefit is you seeking for knowledge. Becoming hungry for what you never knew. Is somebody hearing me? Because in time of ignorance, he overlooked. If you look at what Paul said, he said, in time of ignorance, God overlooked. Now he commands that we should repent. How can you repent if you don't know? Repentance is a product of revelation. When it's revealed, you repent. When it's revealed, you do what? You repent. When it's not revealed, you can't repent because you don't know what to repent from. So as we pursue the knowledge of the Holy One, God push us into the places. Let me, let, let, let me show you something I read in Zoom, Psalm, Psalm 94. What the, the message Bible. I've not seen it like that before in my life. Look at, look at what it says. There's a scripture I normally read here. Psalm, Psalm 94. The beauty the beauty of pursuing the knowledge of God when you realize that you, you almost destroyed yourself in ignorance. Is somebody hearing me? How many of you have realized since you came here that you almost destroyed yourself in ignorance? Oh, that means this message is for you. That means this part in the Shekinah is for you. Are you understanding me? So when you realize that I almost destroyed myself in ignorance, you now start pursuing knowledge. You pursue knowledge. Look at what God will do. Psalm 92. Listen to me. Let me just read it from verse 12. Listen. Since you don't have this Bible in your hand, listen. It says, how blessed the man you train. Rock and James said, who the Lord teaches. How blessed the man you train. God. The woman you struck in your world. Providing a cycle of quiet within the clamor of evil. While a jail is being built for the wicked. That means when God now says, okay, Father, I blew it. I blew it. Now I know. I want to sit down and be taught your word and be trained in your word. God will say, now, because you have not sat down to be trained in my word, you have sat down to know I erase the consequence of everything you did when you never knew. Now, while you are seated and I'm training you and instructing you, every demon that came to attack you, I'll be building a jail for them. So it means whenever we sit down to learn, construction is ongoing. Did somebody understand what I just said? When, as you sit down, you are learning, those demons that came to attack you when you never knew, that move into sexual perversion, abortion, wickedness, stealing, everything, idolatry, and everything you call Christianity, as, as you sit down, God will say, now, nah, I want to build a jail for them. The words of the message. I want to build a jail for them. And, and so, so while you are there learning, precept upon precept, construction is going on. And the demons will parabolate him. And the angel will say, hold on, let this construction work finish. Yay. Sometimes they, they could even come back to attack you. But now you have known. You can resist them. And the, demon will, and the angel will say, don't worry. Let the construction be completed. Yay. You get my point? Here is the point. 
when your obedience complete, construction complete. So, so as you learn the word, you, you live the word, you respond to the word, the construction is ongoing. When your obedience becomes fulfilled, God will pick them like this. Oh, yeah, enter and decree a jail term. Do you know that God speaks from eternity so he does not give 100 years in prison. He does not give 7 years. He gives eternity. He gives what? Eternity. He used the word be in this cell forever. So because he has put them in the cell forever, you will not see the attacks again. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? The attacks will cease. So you begin to live in a life of rest on every side. So me, Lord Jesus, open unto me the parts in your Shekinah that contain your mercy. I want to dwell there. I want to live there. Transport me and my children and my family to that part in your Shekinah that contains your mercy. If you believe in your prayer, shout the Lord, Amen. The second part of the Shekinah, I promise you, I want to show you seven. I will have shown you only two. The first one and the last one. And leave the rest. Or do I do it that way? Do I show you the first and the last? The Alpha and Omega. Of course, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. So the second pathway in the Shekinah is a pathway of God's eternal purpose in time. There's a pathway in the Shekinah glory that is called God's eternal purpose in time. When we step into that pathway, we begin to experience divine acceleration. You know, one of the assignments of the prophetic is to make the invisible real to us. (laughs) Do you understand me? Look at what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. I will fulfill my destiny. I will fulfill my time. I will affect my generation. I will touch more lives. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. I love this. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God that is the many-sided variety oh my God complicated wisdom the manifold wisdom of God may be might, may, may, might be known by who? The ch- who is the church? Is it a building? It's you. When I told you that we are the generation that will worship God until Satan shows up, the first time I said it, people almost ran out of the seminar. One came to me, one was very bold. I said, Apostle, we came here for you to cast out demons. You are not saying we worship until the demons show up. The ones we have are enough. <laughs> when they show up, they don't show up to oppress, they show up to study. Who is this person? What kind of glory is this? I didn't see it when I was in heaven. I didn't see this kind of faith when I was in heaven. What? And you begin to study you and take notes. Tell your neighbor we are the generation that will teach the devil wisdom. That will study you. You have not paid your rent. You are still singing. Father God. You are wonderful. You are excellent. You are marvelous. You are not married yet. You are happy. He who is married is not happy. So the devil will not come and study you. You are single and you are happy. He who is married is sad. Are you understanding me? So you come and study. Take note. What kind of thing is this? May your life fill him with notes. I said, may your life fill the devil with notes to write. In the name of Jesus. But this happened when we step into this second place in the Shekinah. It begins from the message. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. He said, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. To who? To the priest.
principalities and powers where in the heavenly place they will beam their satellite on us not to attack because you don't attack people in the glory but to learn that's what the Bible says look at the next word according to what the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord the eternal purpose watch this it is an eternal plan of God to teach principalities and powers wisdom by us do you understand me it's an eternal program of God to raise new churches vibrant not drinking oil no using sand, no using salt, no washing people's feet, no giving them reckless holy communion. They're flaming in the waves of glory. That, that is the church that will make the devil to come and learn. Listen to me. In the crowd of the spirit, we help people who come here to study us. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. They come to study, they come to observe. That is a fulfillment of a prophecy. We are to teach them wisdom. Why are they growing? Why are they expanding? Why are they moving forward? They don't dream all you like us. They don't use salt like us. Yes, deliverance takes place. They don't pay money for breakthrough. They don't show sick to get a miracle. Yes, amazing things are happening. We are a lesson to our generation. Can I allow him a here in the house? The eternal purpose of the church is to teach the devil wisdom. I choose to be part of that generation. I say I choose to be part of that generation. I choose to be part of the generation that will teach the devil money for wisdom. In the name of Jesus, it's an eternal purpose. Do you understand me? It's an eternal purpose that he must all the winches from your village. They came, they couldn't camp on your roof. They couldn't camp. And they began to study. They began to check what is the reason that they invoke you in a place to kill you. You did not appear. And they began to study what is happening here that they project arrows against you. As the arrow come, it turns back to the center. And yet you were not praying. You were sleeping and snoring. Ah, ah, and the arrow came and went back and said, I said, let's go and study. What kind of a life are they living? What kind of a cross do they have? Can I allow them here in the house? That is the eternal purpose. It's in the Shekinah. When we step into it, we begin to enjoy divine acceleration. Is somebody hearing me? You see, the days of the church learning about the devil will be over in our age. You see how the church learn about Satan? I say, self foundation, evil altar, the demon of rejection, the demon of acception. Monitoring spirit, monitoring lizard, and all the monitor. But in our days, they will come and learn about us. I said they will learn about us. We will not be the one learning about them. Watch this. A generation that sits under the glory to learn about God, said that will come to learn about them. That is why some of you, your siblings don't understand you again. You are generations of waves of glory around you. They don't understand you again because you are coming to a realm to be studied. I say you are becoming, you are coming to a realm to be studied. I say you are coming to a realm to be studied. Are you understanding me? And the good news about us is this. As source of, of light, source of darkness cannot exhaust their study of us. They will keep learning and keep learning and keep learning. You know why? Because we are going to be moving from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. We move from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. Somebody shout the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why they cannot exhaust the lessons. They will not graduate. I say they cannot graduate. So long as we are concerned, they cannot graduate. So long as you are concerned, they cannot graduate. They will keep learning and learning and learning and learning until we go to be with the Lord. And they will keep learning and learn about our children and learn children, children. Are you 
understanding me? That is the eternal purpose of God for the church. And that is the purpose. The day I discovered this many years ago, I said to myself, Lord, help me to complicate the devil. That when he see me, he gets confused. When he saw Jesus, he was confused. He thought he has killed him. Took him, not to the cross. Put him there. Brought him down. Scattered his flesh. Buried him. Saved the grave. I said, it's over. Nonsense. When he moved like this, on the third day, on the third day, the resurrection power stepped into the grave and brought him out. And Jesus came to declare, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and of death. Are you understanding me? So Paul later came and told us, if they have known, they would not have crucified because they don't know. If they have known, they would not have called you single mother because they don't know. If they have known, they would not have called you a useless Christian because they don't know. If they have known, they will not have described you according to your history. They will not have described you according to your prophecy. Because they don't know. We will complicate the devil. We will confuse him. I said we will confuse him. To the intent that he may be known by the church. The manifold. They're many sided, they're complicated. You know why? Because you will display your own, I will display my own. When you come, you become confused. Looking like this, are you understanding me? Looking like this, looking like this, you get confused because all of us are going to glow. I said, We're going to glow. I said, We're going to glow in the glory in the name of Jesus. This is an eternal purpose in the Shekinah glory that we must. How do you step into it? Stop learning about Satan. That is all. Because he's come and learn about us. That is why all my life I've not taught evil foundation. I've not taught evil altar. I've not taught monetary spirit. I've not taught about the devil. Because they are not their God. Shall be strong. And they will do exploit. Are you understanding me? I've taught about God. I've not finished teaching. I will not finish teaching until I leave the earth. Because from revelation to revelation to revelation to revelation, we cannot exhaust the lessons. When I stop learning about the devil, the devil will start learning about me. Write it down. <laughs> Write it down. When I stop learning about the devil, the devil will start learning about me. Is somebody hearing me? When I stop learning about him, he will start learning. He will start learning. Somebody is going to switch classes today. Where you have son learning about the devil, you are going to put him there to learn about you. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Because you will confuse him and blow his brains. Is somebody hearing me? Because we are going to step into that eternal purpose. Of God for the church. Listen. Because of this eternal purpose, God wants to pour so much glory on the end time church. That is why Psalm 102, our text, the starting. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her has come. You see, I God is saying, I want to appear with my glory. Pour sufficient heaven on earth. Cause eternity to invent time. Open diverse portals upon the end time church. Cause my glory to rest and linger upon even the child. So when I cause it to linger, demons will come to learn. That is why Isaiah came up and spoke. He said, It shall come to pass in that day 
that the mountain of the lost house shall be exalted above the mountains shall be established above the hills and that all nations will go there to learn now there are those that will come to learn to walk in the ways of god but there are those that will come to learn to get confused Somebody one day told me many years ago, he went and told my sister, he said, this is your brother, we don't understand him. What kind of a pastor is this? He goes like this, like this, like this. You can't read him. When I heard it, I said, of course, you shouldn't read me. There's a light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it yet. Are you understanding me? The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Son was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him is light, and the light is the life of man, and the light shines into the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. Jesus now said, those who are born of the spirit, you can't read them. They are like the wind. When you think they are coming, that's when they are going. When you think they are going, that's when they are coming. That is the generation we belong to. Nobody can read us. Nobody can understand us. Are you understanding me? If your life is a program, you have been deprogrammed. Your life had to be unreadable. When the devil put you in their machines, and when they type your name, the machine will say error, error, error. Hey, my kill you, bro, Satan. Error, 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 error. The password is not correct. Error, error, error. You don't have this kind of thing here. Yeah. And if they press for that, you blow the machine. There's a name given above it. That are the name of Jesus. Every name must power and every time must confess. If you belong to Jesus, you share in the heritage. Yes. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Some is there's an eternal purpose yes. in the Shekinah glory yes. for the church. For the that is why I want to submit to you. These are the best moments to worship in a true church. You understand? These are the best moments because God is pouring his glory on every assembly of God. But every assembly of Satan, he's frozen them because he wants to exhaust Zion. He wants to raise Zion, not Babylon. He wants to raise Zion, not synagogue of Satan. He wants to raise the temples of God, not temples of idols. When the temple was completed in the days of Solomon, the glory shows up. Shows up. You get my point? The same thing is happening in our age. So these are the best times to worship in a good church. I hear this. These are the worst times to be in the wrong church. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you one of the visions I saw. I saw snakes. Big, mighty snakes migrating into wrong churches. That's what I saw. That's what the vision I saw in this nation. Mighty. It's like, it's like creatures coming out of the sea going into wrong churches in this nation. Occupying them. Taking position. That's how you see lives are wrecked in such places. The demon has a place to sit in that place. That's one thing I saw. So God has removed the little protection that was left. So let the demon force them to run to God. These are the best days to look for a true church. No matter how far it is, go, 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 go. It's better. It's better. You get my point? Because these are the days of Zion. The days of pouring the glory upon us. Is somebody hearing me here today? You will not find the name of Jesus. Let me show you one thing, then we'll go to the next pathway. Revelation 21. Behold, one manner of love the Savior has bestowed upon us. Behold, one manner of love the Savior has bestowed upon us. Behold, one manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Behold, one manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Sons of God. Let me tell you something. In the days of my suffering, when the, when the devil thought he has gotten everything 
I will just sing this song to him. I say, Behold, you are man out of love. You know, I have to make my voice sound good to his ears. So the guy will be more provoked. Oh. Behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon me. I may not have clothes today. I may not have a house to put my head. But behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon me. Behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon me. That I should be called a son of God. That I should be called a son of God. And you see the demons provoking you know why? They cannot be called sons of God again. They were called before, but they have lost it. We are the only one. I say we are the only one that are called sons of God on the face of the earth. That's why the devil is mad at you because you have the authentic ID card. He does not have the ID card. He can only counterfeit God, but you are a small G. I say he can only counterfeit God, but you have a small G. You are the DNA of God in your system. So he can only counterfeit, but we are the original. Behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon us. Behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon us. Behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon us. Oh, yeah, behold, one man out of love, the Father has bestowed upon us. Oh, God, come on, sing it. Should be called the sons of God. Oh, yeah. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Oh, you know, sing that song with pride. Sing it in your house. Sing it in your office. Sing it in your place of work. Only you can be a son of God. No demon can be a son of God. And here is the privilege we have. God has delegated authority to us. To trample upon serpents and scorpions. And over every power of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt us. If you hear me say, yeah. So look at what the Bible says about God's eternal purpose for us. I told you, these are the finest moments to worship in a true church. This is extremely prophetic. These are the finest moments. Show me finest. Look at Revelation chapter 21. He said, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. These are new realms of glory that will kiss the true church. Do you understand me? There will be a new heaven and a new earth in the future. He said, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Watch this. I wish, you know, time is too small to capture eternity. Listen, listen, listen. You see, there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. We all know that. We have learned that during our school of Bible prophecy. But I told you one of these days that the ages to come are casting a shadow in our age. Oh, God help us. They are casting a shadow in our eyes. One of the shadows they are casting is this. In every true church, every church rooted in the will of God, God brings a dimension of Shekinah. A church fulfilling the eternal purpose of the church. He brings a dimension of Shekinah in that place that as you enter like this, all things pass away. Is somebody hear what I just said? You say, I'm not trying to excite you. I am telling you re- spiritual realities. That as you enter in that church, all things pass away. You say, somebody have asked me, Apostle, why don't you break courses? Why don't you carry their evil foundation? Why can't you uproot? I say, listen, where we are, whatever happened in our father's house, do not happen in our own house. Because as you step in, all this... The first heaven will pass away. The first earth will pass away. Is somebody hearing me? It's like when you enter a house and close the door. Let me share with you a testimony. A woman was being chased by bees. Bees, physically. But only her was in it. Bees were pursuing her. She would run into some churches. The bees would follow her. Right into some, they will follow her. Why is she sitting in the church? The beasts are attacking her. These are spiritual things, not physical. She, be, she, she can't say, she will run. So, she went into this church. 
She ran that day like a mad person. The, the church, they had a building. They were not even having service. The, the pastor was just there studying his Bible. She ran into the church compound. When she ran, she was like, hey. and so that the beast never followed her. They were outside waiting. She now went to the pastor. I said, pray for me. He said, what? He said, beast are pushing me. He said, what are they? She took him outside. He said, they are outside. He said, where? He said, look at them. He said, I can't see. He said, pastor, you can't see, but there are beasts there. He now said, did they follow you here? He said, no. He now told her, upon man Zion. They shall be delivered and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. And in the sun, therefore, shall set you free. You shall be free indeed. And the man told her, just plant yourself here. She joined, she sat down that afternoon to evening service. They finished the service, she went home. That was the end of this. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are saved. These are the finest moments to worship in a true church, my friend. Because you are entering a realm where heaven and earth from your father's house will pass away. Is somebody hearing me? The heaven represents the spiritual atmosphere. The earth represents the demonic atmosphere down there. Up, down. The Bible says, as you step into this place, they are all away. That's why I don't break causes. You don't break what God has broken. Do you understand me? Look at the next word. He said, then I just saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. So in these places, you begin to perceive your eternal home. How many of you step here and you had a deep conviction that heaven is your home? You get my point? That is how you sense the eternal home. So, so because you can live a Christian life without sensing it. Now, he now went on to say, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride. I don't for a husband. We are not this the church. Look at the next thing. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle or the dwelling place of God is with men. Hey, we are going to be carriers of God. That's how we don't carry olive oil. That's how we don't carry bottles of water. Because we carry God on our inside. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are not temple of demons. We are not temple of sickness. He said the tabernacle of God is with men. So when you step into the true church of this end time, you become the house of God. Yeah. Is somebody hearing me? Look at the next thing. He said, the tobacco of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and be their God. That's why there's no evil altar again in your life. Because the real altar is the altar of God in heaven. You don't have any evil covenant again, because there's a new covenant in Christ Jesus, saved by the blood of Jesus. Is somebody hearing me here today? You may have lived blood and exchange covenant with people that was time of ignorance but now you have stepped into the place of, of Zion, you have come to the place of cleansing, all those covenants they stand abolished I said they stand abolished look at the next word he said and God not anointing oil and God, not even the prophet and God, that's how today God will be the one touching you and God will wipe away every tear, not some tears every tear from their faces there shall be no more death no sorrow no crying there shall be no more pain for the former days have passed away that is a prophetic proclamation for someone here in the house the former days have passed away I said the former days have passed away before you hit December you will have a powerful story to tell before you hit December you will have a powerful a story to tell. The former days are passing away. No more sorrow. No more we be. When we go there. Hey, my color blessed. God, the Savior, son. Hallelujah. Come on, get the keyboard quickly. 
Continue the journey. 
He said, for the former things have passed away. Somebody must mark this scripture today and take it as a prophetic word. Everything that came with you here that is not allowing you to reflect the beauty of your redemption, it has passed away. It takes one moment for God to change your life. It took him only six days to create the whole world. It cannot take him six minutes to create our lives. I decree over your life that whatever came with you, I prophesy that the former things have passed away. Your former life has passed away. The pain are over. The sorrows are over. That life of tears is over. That life of pain is over. In the name of Jesus. The only place where God does such things is in a true church. Because of the, this, this, this pathway in the Shekinah. You may have your seat. Look at the next one. He said, then he who sat on the throne. Revelation 21. If you, if you can open your Bible, you open. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. I prophesy over your life. Behold, I prophesy all things are new from this day. May the glory of God make all things new in your life. May the glory of God make all things new in your marriage. May the glory of God make all things new in your economy. May the glory of God make all things new in your life here today. In the name of Jesus. He said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who tests. So true churches are churches for people who are hungry for God. Tasty for his word. Tasty for his spirit. Are you understanding me? Look at the next thing. He said, he will overcome shall hear all things. I will be his God. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. But look at verse 8. But the cowardly if you have the rock in James, you say, but, but the fearful. And I want to say, but outside are the dogs. Tell me outside. outside. Do you know what he's saying? There's a generation that cannot step into this realm. They could come to this church. They could come to the true church, but they cannot step into the realm. Because it's about a realm, not a building. Oh, yeah. we, listen, we could sit on the same chair, but on different realms. We sit on the same chair, but I am in the Shekinah. You, you can't enter. Because he said, outside are the fearful. The dogs. Where's the dog? He that go back to his vomit. He that go back to sin that he has repented of. Look at He said, but the cowardly unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in liquid bonds with fire and brimstone. With the second dead. I love it on the rock in jail. Tell you outside at the dogs. They can't step into this realm. May you not be part of this generation. May the word of the Lord wash you and purify you. Re redefine you and reconstruct you. Reconfigure you. In the name of Jesus. So you tap into these realms. In the name of Jesus. Let's go to the next pathway. The third pathway in the Shekinah that the Lord revealed to me. Is a pathway of God's covenant with fathers. Amen. The pathway of God's covenant with fathers. I will just run through it. I won't say much. God's covenant with our apostolic fathers. That is why we have to go back to the 12 apostolic foundation. That is, they built their lives on. God's covenant with our prophetic fathers. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God's covenant with our spiritual fathers. There are three kinds of fathers I've mentioned. The first one is what? Apostolic fathers. The early, early apostles. The 12 disciples apostles. Second is what? Prophetic fathers. The third is what? Spiritual fathers. Those that God is using now to mold us. Are you, are you understanding me? You, you see, what qualifies one to be a father is the covenant you operate with God. God will always cut covenant with fathers to secure the destiny of sons. 
Look at Abraham. God cut a covenant with him that is still protecting Israel today. That is why if you, if you have a figurehead, you call spiritual father, you are in trouble. Because in God's eyes, spiritual father should have covenant. Let me, let me use the physical expression. A spiritual father should have a white umbrella that covers everyone that calls him father by covenant. One of the first things God taught, to, God taught me about spiritual fathering, the making of a spiritual father, when he was teaching me, he told me, he showed me the role of a covenant. The covenant he made with fathers for their sons. And not everything God did with Abraham was for Abraham. Look at the, the, the land he gave Abraham. How many of you know that Abraham never inherited it? Even where to bury Sarah, he bought it. But God had told him it is yours. Is somebody hearing me? A father will receive a promise from God for the children. He received anointings. He received truth, revelation, covenant, things from God for the children. So most spiritual fathers today, they are, they are just spiritual figures. No spiritual fathers. Some spiritual figure. But no spiritual fathers. What make a father a father is the covenant. The covenant God caught with him on behalf of son. The ability to receive heavenly treasure for the earth. For those God will back through his loins. Is somebody hearing me? Now, there is a part in the Shekinah that when, if you can locate the covenant God made with fathers, you come into it. This is deep. I'll just mention it. <clears throat> Because if I were to teach you to take hours, you just have to. It's the same thing I did when I worked my, with my spiritual father. I track his covenant with God. Some he told me, some he did not. By the Spirit, I saw them. For instance, how did Elisha knew about the double portion? There's no place where Elijah told him. Read the Bible. There was no place to talk about the double portion. When Elijah stood with God in 1st King 19 and God told him, I have appointed Elisha to be prophet in your room. Go and check in the Bible. Any day you find a place in the Bible that Elijah sat Elisha down and said, you will be the next prophet after me. Bring it. I will give you 10,000 shillings. I'm serious. Any day you find a place where Elijah sat with Elisha and said, you are the next prophet after me. Hey, I was on in, in Horeb. I was angry. I wanted to die. And God gave me food. And God now came and said, I should come and pick you to be the next prophet. So sit down and learn. He never. When he threw the mantle on him, he screamed on him. There was no courtesy. When he was about living, he wanted to live without Elisha knowing. He wanted to sneak out of the earth. He would take him to Gilgal. Stay here. God has sent me to Bethel. The guy will catch in the spirit. Ah, no, I'm not staying here. I am going with you. He said, okay, okay, okay. They go to Bethel. Stay here. God has sent me to Jericho. The guy will catch in the spirit. No, no, I'm not staying here. Okay, stay here. God has sent me to Jordan. He said, no, I'm not staying here. And the guy followed him. When the cross asked me, my Libra Satan. He didn't tell him, ask me in Gilgal. He didn't say, ask me in Bethel. He didn't say, ask me in Jericho. He didn't say, ask me in Jordan. It is after they crossed the river where he saw the covenant of his father with God. And he knew there's going to be a vacancy in the spirit. And it's going to be the next generation. So I must follow. It was the covenant of God with Elijah that Elijah saw that make him stick. Are you understanding me? 
So Elisha knew the double portion by knowing the God of Elijah. You see, there was a prayer David prayed for Solomon. I preached that prayer for three hours in Nigeria. He told Solomon, Know the God of your father and fear him. Know the God of your father. Because when you know the God of your father, he will show you the covenant he cut with your father. Is somebody hearing me? So I discovered my... That, was, that is why I moved in the waves he moved in. If you don't discover his covenant and log on to it, the Shekinah that manifests in his life cannot manifest in your life. Is somebody hearing me? When I sit before my spiritual father, when he's talking, I tune my ear to the life he lived. That's what the covenant is. The life he lived. How does he give? My spiritual father can empty himself. I told you he went to one crusade. They gave him, I think, 35 cars. Is it 60 cars or 35 cars? Not, not cars that when you start, <coughs> no, no. No, the car is leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me up. I want to eat chapati, chapati. No. If you have such a car, may the wind of God change it for you. May God give you a brand new machine. I said, may God give you a brand new machine. In the name of Jesus. So you proudly drive to the church. Don't say, Apostle, where's your own? I don't need it. I'm a foreigner. This is your nation. Buy in Jesus' name. If I want to buy, I will have bought. Buy in Jesus' name. I want to see my members riding on brand new jeeps. Yeah. my phone. Coming with jeeps, cars that are speaking in tongues. Yeah. When you start the car, the car is meditating. Hello, hello. La prashakalaka. Lekra prashakalaka. Receive it in the name of Jesus. May the miracle push you. May the miracle overtake you. May the miracle push you. May the miracle overtake you. In the name of Jesus. So that was how they gave him those cars right from the crusade ground. He went home with only one. He was a giver. When I saw that, I said, okay. I must be like my father in giving. You get my point? I watch his consecration. I watch his prayer. The covenant of fathers are hidden in their lifestyles. I just gave you a secret. They are hidden in their lifestyles. The lifestyle they, that God has carved for them. That's what the covenant is. Now when you stand on that covenant, you get the miracle they get. That is why Elijah stood and said, Where Elijah? Where now is the Lord God of Elijah? And the waters parted. He didn't pray the name. I'm not saying you pray the name of your father and the Lord. No. I'm talking about locating the covenant. It is ignorant that many people pray in their name. It's stupidity. You get my point. But if you locate the covenant, you're already in the name. You locate the covenant. You come under the Shekinah, it rests on you. Is somebody hearing me? There are moments that when I'm ministering, it will be as if it's no longer me. Because I know how my father ministered. When innocent ones here, each time we go home, he, and my one day he said to me, he said, there was a point you got to, I begin to see Papa in you. I forgot that it was you that is standing. They co- show me the covenant. Say again, the covenant. You see, that's the way it works. That is a pathway in the Shekinah glory. So if you trace it and stand on it, the glory rests on you. May you find it. May you find it. How do you find it? Be ready to follow. Only Elisha followed. The rest of the prophet could not follow. Is that not? They were camping in Gilgal, in Bethel. In, you get, when, you are, when you get offended at me, you can't discover it. You don't get offended as your father. My father, the Lord, insulted me severely. I did not even take it as insult. I took it as a blessing. Won't they look at me and say, empty head? I say, yes, sir. <laughs> That's why I have called for you to fill the head. It is empty. Sir, it is empty. Fill it. Fill the head. He will slap some of us. Thank you, sir. You go to a crusade ground where crowds are gathered. 
You do something, you are an usher. He tells you, go and carry that again. Maybe somebody fell under the anointing. You didn't carry the person the way you want, and the person fell on the ground. Bah! He said, come here, come here. Bah! Yeah, like that, there, like that. The whole crusade will be watching you. You don't like that on the floor. Sometimes he will forget you and go. That was how we were trained. So that when people are found out they're anointed, you hold them gently. Do you, you understand me? So when you get offended, you can't track the covenant. If the devil wants to ruin you, he will make you to be offended at everything. So you cannot track the covenant. I don't want to go into our prophetic fathers. We're not close today. I don't want to go into our prophetic fathers. That one is a two months teaching. You get my point? Let me just dwell within and move to the next pathway in the glory. Let's go to the next pathway in the Shekinah. Number four is the pathway I call it the defense of God's reputation. The defense of God's reputation. This number four pathway also make God to go crazy. Whenever God wants to defend his reputation, he deploys all the forces in his throne to the earth. God is in the business of protecting his name. Is somebody hearing me? Let me tell you, the judgment that is going to hit perverted pastors is because they have desecrated his name. Go and read the book of Malachi. You will see the judgment there. They have desecrated his name. So when a preacher lives in sin, he has desecrated the name of the Lord. Not just a preacher, when a Christian, people know you as a child of God. You're not going to start living in sin. You are destroying the name of God. Is somebody hearing me? So God is in the business of protecting his name. Also, when the hidden and the wicked rise against God's work, God will move to protect his name. So there's a pathway in the Shekinah where God protects his name. That was the pathway that Elijah stood on in 2 Kings chapter 1. When the, 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 the king that went to seek the God of Ekron sent soldiers to go and arrest him. He now said, if I be a man of God, let me tell you something. He did not brag. If it was bragging, he would have died. What happened? An angel stood and was telling him what to tell them. That was why when he wanted to continue at the third time, the angel told him, go with them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Also, when he prayed that let the God that answered by fire be God indeed, that was a Shekinah defending himself. One thing about this pathway is this. When you are sold out to God, God bring you into it. When you are sold out to God, God will start doing things in your life just to defend his name. Just to defend his name. Somebody will just insult you. And as he's leaving you, something is happening to the person. Somebody will just mock at your Christianity. As he's leaving you, something will just happen to the person. That, that's the way it works. And some of you, you are from villages that such things need to happen. Because they don't know God. That's why I told you on Wednesday that a time is going to come that I'm going to prophesy, plan a word here that anybody who came here to attack us, as they go home, they won't get to their houses. A vehicle will, if they are driving their car, straight fire will catch on the car and consume them. So they will know the cry of the spirit is not a church as usual. We are an army of the Lord, back by the glory, shield by his power. You cannot come here and insult us. The days are coming that we are going to plan that. Are you understanding me? And God will be able to do terrible things in righteousness to shake the heavens and the earth just to protect his name. Everything God did in the Bible, most of it is to protect his name. Are you understanding me? Let me show you something. Look at Exodus. 23. Exodus 23. If God put his name in your life, his glory will start hovering around you to protect you. May God put his name in your life. What is the name of God? The presence. Christ in you. When he enters you, you carry his name. When Christ dwells in you by faith, you carry his name. You got my point? So you will start doing this to protect his name in your life. There were a people that slandered me 
from 1996, sorry, 1997 till 2003. It's like God allowed them to finish. When they finish, he began to reply. He replied until I have to pray. Father, please stop, stop, stop. When God wants to prove to you that you are his child, he becomes crazy. He will start beating whoever he will beat. Is somebody hearing me? When he said, touch not my anointing, he said, what did Every child of God is anointed. There are four levels of the anointing. So even if you have the first level, you should not be touched. This aspect of the Shekinah, when you are sold out, God brings you there. Tell your neighbor, be sold out for Jesus. Say again, be sold out for Jesus. I decree that anyone the devil sent here again to come and cause problem in this house, they will not get back to their houses. They will miss their way in the name of Jesus. They will be scattered in different direction. If they are driving on their vehicles, it will cut flames in the name of Jesus. If they are walking on foot, God will send a vehicle to knock them down in the name of Jesus. In terrible, true, terrible things in righteousness, may this house be protected from evil. Anyone that moves against us again, trying to tarnish our image or say things that we never did. May the glory of God appear. May the Shekinah glory appear. In the name of Jesus. And whoever will run after you for evil, God will send nails, sharp nails to penetrate into their cars, to penetrate into their body, to penetrate into their life. Whoever shoot a gun at you, the bullet will enter their belly. As they press the trigger, the bullet will enter their own belly. The angel of the Lord will push the bullet back to their body. In the name of Jesus, whoever will shoot an arrow at you, as they pull the bow, the angel of the Lord will paralyze their hands. The arrow will go back to their hearts. In the name of Jesus, so be Lord Jesus, defend your great name. There's a dimension that she kind of don't protect the name. There's the name of the Lord in the crowd, the Spirit. It will be protected. The gifts of us shall not prevail against it. Anyone who slander us, whatever they say, they will become. Whatever they say about us, they will become whatever they have said. In the name of Jesus, any preacher that stand in this church and speak against us shall lose their members to this church. If they mention my name, mention anything true, hook or crook about the cry of the spirit, the wind of the Lord will blow in their midst and bring the members to this place in the name of Jesus. So be Lord Jesus, let your glory protect your name. There's a pathway that defend the name of the Lord. Look at how God revealed it. Exodus 23, verse 20. He said, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you to the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgression. Why? Look at the next statement. Why? Look at the next statement. Why? For my name. Do you see it? For my name is it. When God put, you see, when God wants to protect you from winches, He put His name in your life. Amen. So that when they move against you, they die. Something just happened to them. May God put His name on your children. You see, when your children go to school, all they need is the name of the Lord. Look at how you put, you see, there are, there are about two or three ways God put His name in our lives. The first day way is when we are, give our lives to Him. The power of God comes and seal our faith. His name has been put. Second way he put his name is when he tells his servant to put a blessing on us. Even you, when you hold your child and pray for your child and prophesy, you have put the name of the Lord there. Anything you do in the name of the Lord, confer his name on that thing. Is somebody hearing me? You will not fail. 
you will not lose. Nobody will overcome you. You shall be victorious. God will protect his name in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the next pathway. And it's a kind of it's a pathway of sacrifices towards divine will. When we sacrifice towards divine will, we stumble into this pathway. Look at what he said in Psalm 50, verse 5. Sacrifices towards divine will. Psalm 50, verse 5. Look at what he said. He says, Gather my sins together to me. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Look at verse 6. Let the heavens do what? Declares righteousness. For God himself is just seller. There is a pathway in the glory that is meant for those who live a sacrificial life. I told you before. When you sacrifice your resources with a genuine heart, you come into that place. Let me show you how, how the sign that you have entered. Watch this. The kind of giving you do that brings you here is not that an offering. That an offering has its own blessing. You get my point? The kind of giving you do that brings you here is not tight and offering. It's a mega sacrifice that costs you something. If somebody help me. Look at what happened from my experience. When that giving, any giving that will bring you into the Shekinah will kill you. Because no flesh shall glory in his presence. That was what Jesus wanted to do to the rich young ruler. When he told him, go and sell all. He wanted to bring him to the Shekinah. The guy resisted. It is easy to give tithe and offering, but difficult to do a giving that will bring him into the glory. Because Satan will raise every reason to discourage you. He knows you are coming to a realm where he will lose grip on your money. There's a generation that the devil does not have grip over their money. He said, This is so when you do that kind of a lead giving, God will leave you for a season to go through pain. That is your dying season. Is somebody hearing me? It's your dying season. You, you will go through a season of pain while you are there, only his presence will be in your life. He speaks to you, he communicates to you, his glory is just around you, but he allows you to go through death. You look here, no money, look here, no money, look here. If you are immature, you will start regretting. That's why I now say, no, no, this person is not mature for the glory. He will keep you, bless you, and keep you there until you become mature. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Givings that will bring us into the glory will strip us. They will strip us. And it's not something that God will use somebody to tell you sometimes. Most times, you'll be alone with him. He will breathe it to your ear. Because he knows when somebody tells you, you are, you are going to insult the person. If, or if you obey, by the time you begin to go through the trials, the dying process, you start hating the person. Are, do you know what I'm saying? I've been there. What kept me was my maturity, my friend. And when I did that first, I kept doing it. Because when you become used to it, it becomes a lifestyle. Because a lifestyle. Now, this kind of giving, you will not be told to bring it so that you break course in your father's house. That is a game. Say me game. Yeah. That is called in Nigeria, we call it Magu Magu. Say Magu Magu. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is game. They are playing game with you. Oh, oh, let me give this money so that I get married. Ooh, so me, ooh. Ooh. This one, God will tell you, bring it. No promise attached. Because he said, give it to kill you. No promise attached. He will say, my son, get up. I remember one time, the first time it happened, I received a salary in the church I was working. I received the money on Sunday, early in the morning. It was small, but it was my last card on it. I, was, I started planning what I would do with this. Give this to my mother. Give, give. So during the time of prayer, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, drop everything on the offering box. I did like, eh? <laughs> do you think it was a man that told me I would listen to him? I would say, get it behind me, Satan. But this time around, you cannot tell God, get it behind me, because it's in you. He cannot go behind. He cannot go. Yeah. He's inside. Yeah. So when I did that, that's okay. I didn't know when tears began to drop from my eyes. <laughs> and I dropped the money. Huh? And I left. My mom was expecting money in the house because I thought it would be paid today. When I went back home, where is the money? Um, 
Ah. Ah. It's okay, I understand. I understand. Don't worry. I know. I said, thank you, ma. And I left. Thank God she understood. You get my point? Then that was the first time. After that, that church drove me away. Because of, I, I've told the story. And I suffered for three, four years. Let me give you a little, one of the things that happened. Immediately I left that place. One man that was a Christian, but he has backslidden. He became my friend. <laughs> so on Sunday morning, instead of us to look for a church to attend, look at what we do. We'll be constructing his house because he was building his house. I remember one incident that I enter inside the hole and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. What are you doing here? <laughs> we were building a soccer way. What you call what you call it here in Kenya? Where all the excreta enters? <laughs> Through water system. The pit, the safety sewage. How do you call it? <laughs> Septic tank. That's what we're building. So he was inside, he, he did civil engineering. So he was inside. Me, I will bring the blocks out. We'll take it in. We'll be talking, take it in. When I enter inside, the Lord said to me, What are you doing here? I said, ah. That was how far I went. Do you know why I was doing it? So that at least I, I could eat once a day. I was there. But in four years, I counted my first million. The money came in a period of six months. The way it assembled, I can't, I can't explain. Beep, 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 beep. When I, the day I went to the bank, because of the way I look, the cashier asked me, is it your money? I said, check the name. And yes, the name is yours. The picture is yours, but your face, is this your money? I said, person, please don't provoke me. First bank of Nigeria. That account is still there. I took my first million. And in one year later, I wrote three, two books at once. I called the... In fact, I paid before they started printing. When God pushed you to this realm, wait for this week. I want to teach you how the Shekinah gather money. Amen. The, the, it's, it's a household conference. We're not going to invite outsiders. Do you get my point? It's going to start on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. Do you hear what I just said? I'm not, I'm not going to print a handbill. I, will, I may send text message, but write it now. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Write it, write it, write it. I'm going to teach you how the Shekinah brings money. How many of you are interested? How the Shekinah gathers money to us. I will teach you that. One hundred thousand Friday, so it's for in-house. It's going to it's going to be our twenty eighteen Kingdom Wealth Apostolic School. It's basically for the house. You get my point? Basically for the house, because I don't want to sell those things outside. It's for us alone. Now listen. If God wants to push you to this realm, He will start teaching you how to live a sacrificial life. If in the area of finance, it will go the way I've mentioned. In the area of consecration, he will bring Romans to you. Romans chapter 12. How many of you knows it? What did he say? Offer yourself as what? As a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to who? To God. He now said, that is your word. Reasonable. That means that is what is expected of you. There's something called atonement. God will start teaching you the mystery of atonement. Leading you into fasting prayer, fasting, prayer. He's bringing you to that realm, my friend. Is somebody hearing me? So there are many other things he will do, but let me go to number six because of our time. The sixth pathway in the Shekinah, I won't spend so much time in this, is a pathway of thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Thanksgiving, praise, and worship. That's the pathway in the Shekinah. If you read the Bible, Wherever the praise, worship, and thank God, you see the fire fall. You see when the Temple of Solomon was dedicated, the fire fell. The sang. Paul and Silas. The praise. 
They sang him and the Shekinah came and opened the prison doors. Do you, do you understand me? Second Chronicles 20. Jehoshaphat, what did he do? He sang. What happened? Shekinah came and gave them prosperity. I told you the other day, your skill cannot assemble the Shekinah, my friend. It's your, you being chosen, called and chosen. We need gospel artists that can summon the Shekinah for us. Do you get what I'm talking about? That even if you, when you put their little cassette, you don't feel anointing, you feel the glory. Because if you feel anointing, it could be of the devil. Do you know how I know? <clears throat> I visited one family in 19, sorry, in 2001. An unbeliever, believing family. Their uncle knows me, so he sent me there. I was looking for a place where I can pray during Christmas. So they had a big house. He said I should go there because he thought when I go there, I can bring God's presence to the house and all of that stuff. So I went. So I sat down in this in their sitting room. We were just talking. They, knew, they were knowing me for the first time, so you don't have to put people's house like that. So we we're talking. And since it's an unbeliever home, so they put in my Kajansu film to entertain me. And the man would think, <laughs> me, I've not watched it before. I used to hear, I've not watched it. So, but I was saying, my heart, can't this people So, this is what they want to entertain me. What? So, but I was, you know, you say with your mind, but you laugh with your teeth. <laughs> Lord, how do I start to talk this way about God now? <laughs> now, one thing I saw that amazed me was this. The man sank. People fell under the anointing. How many of you have watched it before? God. They were screaming, ah, fainting, collapsing. That is anointing. So the fact that you sing and I feel the anointing doesn't mean you are called. I should feel the glory. There is something the devil cannot summon. It is called the glory of God. Is somebody hearing me here today? So, through thanksgiving, praise and worship, the glory can be summoned. Are you understanding me? Finally, I am rushing because of time. The seven pathway in the Shekinah glory is the pathway of the confirmation of God's eternal world. The pathway of what? The confirmation of God's eternal world. That is a pathway that every one of you is standing today. That man is too weak if you understand. Look at Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Verse 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he will form you from the womb. How many of you were formed by God? The only person that will not be touched today is somebody who is not formed by God. All of us were formed in our mother's womb by God. Look at what he does say. I am the Lord who makes all things. Who stretches out the heavens all alone. Who spread abroad the earth by myself. You see, when God introduced himself like this, it means he's about telling you to step aside. Is somebody hearing me? Look at the next thing. Who frustrate the signs of the babblers. And drive diviners mad. Who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness? Look at verse 26. Everyone read it. Who confirm? That is too weak. That is too weak. Read it. Read it. Who confirm the word of his servant and perform the counsel of his messengers? Who say to Jerusalem, You shall be. Uh -huh. And to the city of Judah, You shall be burned. And I will raise up what? Do you see that glory? That there is a part in God that confirms his word. Do you know that when the word of the Lord is not confirmed, people will not know that it is the Lord that has spoken. Are you understanding me? Look at another scripture I want to show you. Isaiah 55. He touched me. 
Oh, yes, he touched me. Oh, what joy that filled my soul. Something happened. I know he touched me and made me Look at look at Isaiah fifty-five, verse ten. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and did not return there. But water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. Yeah. Which aspect of God that performed this word? The Shekinah. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper. In the day for which I send it. So what's this? When God speaks a word, the Shekinah carries it and take it right. You see the way a guided missile goes? If God speaks a word to your life, and like we are a thousand seated, the Shek- all of us could say, Amen! Shekinah will say, I know, I know, I know, I know who this word is for. He will carry it like this and come. It in the life of who God said. It is this dimension of God's glory that executes the word of the Lord. Is somebody hearing me? Look at Hebrews chapter 2. We are closing. Then we pray. Hebrews chapter 2. Your life will not remain the same. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2 verse, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more inner heed to the things we've heard. Lest we drift away. Why? Those things we heard are the things that the Shekinah want to accomplish. Somebody help me. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect such great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Look at verse 4. God also bearing witness. Do you see it? Both with signs and wonders, with various miracles, and gift of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. So this is the Shekinah glory confirming the word of the Lord. So it now means if I want the glory to move in my life, I should locate his word. Receive it and attach myself to it. Is somebody hearing me? There is a world which we are going to stand on right now. Let's go back to our text, Psalm 102. Is something more than gold? Is something more than gold? The word of the Lord in the hearts of man is something more than gold. The Bible says God is so his word above his name. Do you understand me? That is how important his word is. Look at Psalm 102. Psalm 102 where we started. We stop at verse 17. Is that not? Verse 16. For he shall, for the Lord shall be of Zion. He shall appear in his glory. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute and shall not despise the prayer. That means when I am praying under the glory, God begin to check my heart to see which part to place me. Is somebody hearing me? Look at the next word. This will be written of the generation to come that the people yet to be created may praise the Lord and we are that people. Is that not? Now, let me switch into the prophetic aspect of this scripture. The Bible says in our time, God will build his church with his glory. And while he's doing it, he will regard the prayer of the destitute. There are seven kinds of prayer God hears under the glory. I can't talk about them today. You get my point? Look at verse 19. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven, the Lord viewed the earth. Stop. 
What does the Bible mean by the height of the sanctuary? In our mind, we will think that it is heaven. But that height is his glory. When Israel were crossing the Red Sea, the Bible says that God looked upon the Egyptian from the pillar of cloud. May God look upon our enemies today from the pillar of his glory here in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Look at verse 20. What will you look to do? To hear the groaning of the prisoner. To release those appointed to death. So that they can declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And his praise in Jerusalem. When would that happen? Look at verse 22. When the people are gathered together. Have we gathered today? Have we gathered together today? Now rise on your feet. This is the time. Is somebody hearing me? This is the time that it will happen. Are you understanding me? Now, remember, we say the Shekinah confirmed his word. And this is what that when he built up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard our prayer. He will not turn it down. Look at number one, he will hear the prayer of the destitute. He will have no one to help. Number two, he will hear our groaning. Number three, he will destroy every appointment with death. Is somebody hearing me? Let's burn our feet and pray.